Hi guys, I'm Mayland Ovan, certified athletic therapist and founder of Rehab U Movement and Performance Therapy. We're going to talk about prerequisites for overhead lifting because there are prereqs for overhead lifting. Um, the venue of CrossFit and boot camp training has done a wonderful thing for the sedentary population. It's mobilized a lot of people to start moving. People who weren't likely to go to the gym and do their program by themselves started moving in these group training settings and that's of course a wonderful thing. Um, what happens though is that a lot of people starting to do, started to do a lot of overhead work which they're they had not been accustomed to do. And if you think about it in, in a sedentary lifestyle, in activities of daily living in our day to day, we don't really work overhead very much. So if we're putting dishes away, for example, and we put dishes away on the, on the highest, in the highest cupboard, we're still not fully overhead. Uh, we do a little bit of you know, combing our hair, blow drying hair, taking shirts off, but it's not very much overhead work. So when people jump into overhead lifting, they sometimes don't have the prerequisites that they require to be loading or lifting weights overhead. So we're gonna go through some of the prerequisites that we know are necessary for um, overhead lifting and some screens that you might wanna do before you let people, before you allow people to do repetitive uh, loaded overhead lifting. So we know that when the shoulder has to go into full flexion, so when we need to work overhead, we need thoracic extension, we need scapular movement, we need proper head positioning, um, and we need good position for the anterior core. If we just screen for thoracic extension, let's uh, have Mike kneeling down sitting on his heels. So I like this position because it essentially locks the lumbar spine a little bit more. So he's less likely to get a lot of extension through the lumbar spine. I'm gonna ask him to, ask him to clasp his hands behind his neck and then squeeze his elbows together in the front. And then he's gonna point his elbows up towards the ceiling. And I wanna see if he gets extension in through the thoracic spine. So come back to neutral and then come into extension, and I'm trying to see, does that spine move into extension? All right, back and forth again, and you can do this a couple times to see, does that thoracic spine move into extension? So we see that there's a little bit less extension than what we'd like to see for Mike, okay? So first part of the screen is we're gonna to wanna to see, do they have that thoracic extension, yes or no? We also want to look at scapular movement. So Mike, you can have a seat back facing the camera. In order to get full elevation of the shoulder, we need the scapulae to rotate upwards 60 degrees. So as he raises his arms in front of him, fully overhead, we're trying to see, does that scapula rotate? Does the medial rotate, medial border rotate a good 60 degrees, okay? I would say not quite in Mike's case. And he can come back down. So look for the medial borders of the scapula, and then as he brings his arms up, you're looking to see, do they rotate a good 60 degrees, okay? So, scapular movement. So we've looked at thoracic extension, scapular movement. You can stand up, Mike, in front of the bench. In a previous capsule, I discussed the standing shoulder flexion test, which is a valuable test for assessing for overhead movement and screening. So if you stand sideways to the camera, and then we're gonna look at when he raises his arms, we're trying to see, does, he, does the head protrude forward? All right, and we're also trying to see, can he get the arms to 180 without extending through the lumbar spine? Okay, and those will be indications of whether or not he's ready for overhead movement and what limitations he might have. You can bring your arms down that you would need to look at. For example, if he can't quite get the arms to 180 without extending through the lumbar spine, we might be looking at tight lats. If he protrudes the head forward, we're thinking he's lacking some stability here in the cervicothoracic junction. So those are all little factors that would indicate to us that he's not quite ready for overhead lifting. So in the second part of this capsule, what we're gonna look at is once they have the mobility required for the overhead movement, now how can you screen it using a load to see are they ready to load that pattern?